Crow stood with his back against the cold furnace, his eyes closed as he pinched the bridge of his nose, his shoulders slumped. Get your coat. What? Lock up the shop. We're going now. But what? You're riding with me today. Protective custody. I need to take Odin back to his place. Let's go. But my shop. My my work. I can't just shut everything down. Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, you need to make some long-term plans about shutting it down or giving it to someone else to run. Because as soon as we find the powers, you will pick yours back up and leave Ordinary like you should have three months ago. You broke the rules. That's not going to fly. All right. I got it. Let me shut things down. Give me a minute. He pushed off the furnace and headed to the back of the shop to his small office and outside the door. Do you believe him? I looked over at Odin, whose back was toward me, his hands planted against his hips so that his elbows jutted out. He looked broad and strong as a granite outcropping. Crow? Mm. Do I believe he doesn't have the powers anymore? That's pretty obvious. Odin shifted his weight and turned toward me, backlit now by the gray day. Do you believe he doesn't know where the powers are? My first response was to say yes, of course. But he had admitted the power tricked him. Maybe, somehow, even in a subconscious way, he might know where the powers were. If he knows, I'll make him tell me. (sighs) You heard me before, didn't you, Delaney? Heard what? Crow isn't your uncle. Not family. None of us are. Your father understood that. There is a division between gifted mortals like you and your bloodline and gods who are temporarily mortal. Even though we don't carry our powers, we don't see the world in the same way as a mortal. We can't. We've been changed too much by the power we bear. We also don't experience time as a mortal would, and we certainly do not love as a mortal loves. Not even if we try. So if Crow has found a way to make you think he loves you, that he cares for you as a mortal cares for another mortal, think twice, Delaney, before you believe him. If I believe Crow doesn't care for me, for my well-being, because no god is capable of that kind of caring, then how exactly am I to take your advice, Odin? It's very kind of you to warn me like this. I'm not saying this out of kindness. I'm just telling an officer of the law to be wary of me and my kind, especially when we're trying to be helpful. Or when you're worried about me? Yes. Are you? Worried? You are more than your ability, Delaney. I understand that. Many of the gods do. But just as many gods and creatures and mortals in town see you as your job. As the police chief, acting as the law in town, you're subject to enormous expectations. You could be put in the line of fire when those expectations are not met. A chill washed over my skin. Before she compliantly left town three months ago, Hera had told me that a war was coming to Ordinary. I'd been looking over my shoulder ever since. Now this. What line of fire? If you know something about the war headed our way, I want to know. War? Is that what you think? Hera had also told me to choose my allies carefully, that people might not be who I thought they were. I studied Odin and went with my gut. I trusted him. Hera mentioned a war headed our way. Do you know anything about that? Through the ages, there have always been wars among gods. Just because we vacation doesn't mean we give up our basic instincts. But war, here... He was silent for several minutes. What does your blood tell you, Delaney? His words flashed like fire across my skin, then sank deep into my bones where they pulsed. My blood, reed blood, protectors of ordinary. We were connected to this land, connected to all the forces and creatures and gods who walked upon it. Our roots ran deep, into the soil, the sand, the salt... And I knew in that quick instant that something was coming for Ordinary. I don't know. You had better. And soon, your father didn't listen to the blood. You understand that, don't you? What happened? He chose sides. Too late. All right, I'm ready. Crow entered, wearing a quilted canvas jacket and a gray beanie shoved over his dark hair. He was also wearing an umbrella on his head. It was clear from Odin's look that our conversation was over now that Crow had returned, though I had a hundred more questions to ask. Also, umbrella hat? Everything okay, Delaney? 
What is on your head? My hair. Over that. My beanie. Why are you wearing an umbrella hat on your head? Where else should I wear a hat? Really, Delaney, you're ridiculous. <laughs> I've wasted enough of my time today on you, Crow. If Delaney weren't here, I'd show you just how much I've enjoyed wasting my time on someone who couldn't do one simple job right. Crow licked his lips and glanced at me for reassurance. Either he was afraid of Odin, or he was playing me so I would take his side. Okay, that kind of double-guessing everything was going to have to stop right now. I was not paranoid. Unless maybe I should be paranoid. Let's go, Bumbershoot Head.